Okay, part two. And this is going to be my last video for today because not only am I very tired, but the camera is full. All right, so hopefully I'll be able to finish up this piece um, as best I can. There's not going to be any fancy flaking. It's thick and it's thin enough now. I'm just gonna do work around the edges. Yeah. And on this particular type of blade, I think I'm gonna dull the back. And I'm I'll straighten this out. Or maybe I won't. It, you can't see it when you haft it anyway. Maybe I'll thin it down or shape it a little bit. So it is gonna be all pressure flaking from here for the most part. So guess what? We get to talk about stuff, get cozy, get some hot chocolate if you're in the cold weather, get some iced tea if you're in the hot weather, because we're going to be listening to nothing but what sounds like a high-speed tennis match. Yeah, all this clicking. Now, I looked these up online, these blades. And uh, you can buy them in steel. Make your own knives. I never thought of making one of these out of stone. Never did. Until someone mentioned it. And I was thinking, Tonto blades? You mean like from the Lone Ranger? <laughs> no, that's Tonto, not Tanto. It's t this is a Tanto. Tanto. You want to say it like a dumb American is tanto. Right? Right. Tanto. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. I for, had forgotten about the the, uh, the suggestion. And I was, uh, I made a lot of videos on just regular blades without even remembering that someone had asked me to do one of these. And I could have been doing several of these. Because who knows, maybe this is a, a high demand item. These blades in steel average more, you know, they're higher priced than the normal blades. And I think they're made of the same steel as normal blades. These demand a good price. Just because of the shape. So you never know. Yeah. I never know about these things. About the types of things that you can flint nap. You gotta start getting creative. Because uh, one of the reasons why I wanna start getting creative and do art pieces is because I'm a little bit disillusioned with the whole artifact and archeology span thing. Yeah, I, I like to make reproductions of artifacts. But sometimes the knowledge gets abused because uh, people learn how to do this and then they start making fakes. Some people, I shouldn't say people, I should say some people, very few, of course. No, I'm serious. Very few actually start making fakes, but it is possible. They gotta learn from somebody. So if they are learning, they're learning from people who make the reproductions. I can uh, contribute to the, to the whole scene if I keep making reproductions. You know, it's, it's probably not my responsibility to police that sort of thing, but it's in the back of my mind that, you know, I could be helping someone out that needs to learn how to make fakes. That's not a good thought. Not if I can be making art pieces and feel a lot better as far as physically and mentally. Not even counting the fact that it could be abused. You know, if I can make stuff that I like, you know, different styles of blades and art pieces 
are actually are actually enjoyable to make. And I've said that before in videos, I've said that I may just go to art pieces and start making a lot more of them. So here you go. This is not really an art piece, but similar. Now this is probably better for the flake over grind guys instead of the random flaker guys. I'm one of the random flaker types where my, most of my flint napping is random. These will probably look best with a pattern flaking. Like most art pieces, they kind of look better when they have a uh, patterned flaking. I'm stopping right here because I encountered a crushed area. I should probably should just move on and come back to it. But I can't, I can't do it. All right, so art pieces and stuff are enjoyable to make. And I think where I was going with that is, as far as doing flint napping, uh, I can do it with any mood. I don't have to force myself to do it. I actually want to do it. As long as it's not too difficult, or the, as long as the stone cooperates. It does get old if you're working with stone that's not cooperating. Now, especially if you do it over and over and over with stone that is not really that great. I think I know that a lot of people get discouraged because they they're only working really bad stone, and it's because it's difficult to motivate yourself to working bad stone, even though you might love it. I can do it with any mood. Any mood that I'm in, I can still flint nap. It was one of those things that I was very glad that I found because I could do it with any mood and still feel like I was accomplishing something. You know, I could actually go into my shop and make something without worrying about, do I really want to do this? It was always, yep, I do want to do it. I like it. I can do it. I can nap under any circumstances, cold, hot, bad mood, good mood, tired, awake, doesn't matter. It's one of those weird things. It's, we are wired as humans to work this kind of, in this kind of way, I, I think. Sitting here just chipping away chipping away at this item slowly. Kind of like wood carving as well. You're just carving away slowly if you're doing it by hand. That kind of thing. As humans, we're, we've adapted to this kind of work. It's, it's wired into us. Yeah. Now the hard part about this particular blade is getting the edges straight uh, in the outline. The edges straight this way uh, is hard too, but the outline is going to be harder, I think. The overall shape, because there's so many chances for mishaps. Yeah, I do think I need to make it a little more narrow. A 
But, uh, let, I'm just going to let uh, even out the the outline first. Hold on. So yeah, mostly pressure flaking. I'm going to try to finish it up with this particular session. Yeah, getting that edge straight is not going to be that easy. Let's see. Especially if I do any more thinning on it. I might take a bite out of it by mistake. So I'm going to regularize it. And if I need to hit a spot on it with percussion, I can do it now before it gets too late. Okay. Yeah, I can see some spots I'm gonna I'm gonna hit with some percussion. Not the back, because the back is it needs to be thick. I'm debating whether or not to put a curve in it. I've seen some without curves. You know, I've seen some with straight backs. I've seen some with uh, convex backs and some with concave backs. So I think I'll just leave it like that for now unless something happens and to uh, force me to change it. Yeah, it's a little bit too thick for my taste, so I'm going to try to whittle it down slightly with indirect percussion. Very slightly. Just little flakes. Little flakes. Little flakes that I can't do with pressure. They're just a little bit bigger than what I can get with pressure. Anything that I can get with pressure, I'll just leave it. Like this, this lump here, I need to take that out with the percussion strike. If I can. Let's see. Because it's hard to get those big lumps with pressure flakes. Hard to get those out with pressure flakes. I'm going to watch the step fracturing. I can probably pick that one out, but i got to watch it. See if I can catch it with a percussion flake. No, I just added to it. We'll see. Ah, another one. Another step fracture. Okay, let's see. Thinking about it too much. Just gotta do it. One thing about those tiny flakes, I mean those thin ones, thin flakes, they often end with a fingernail termination. Yeah, not a good thing. So 
Same rules apply. I'm thinning down the ends first. Being very careful not to hit directly into the base, but kind of, kind of uh, off center a little bit. Yeah, there's no way to get that. Yeah, that's too too rigid. The back is too strong for me to send a flake off the back. It's not too bad. The only the only thing I'm worried about is that one right there, that step fracture. I may have to leave it in. Yeah, so that face is not going to be that great, but I'm not going to take a chance. If I take a flick from the back into that area, chances are it'll leave a concavity. And then I'll have to even it out by striking the other side. Unless I strike the other side first. Let's see. As long as everything is symmetrical. Getting dicey. I wasn't going to mess with the back. I wasn't going to, but Let's see if I can get this to work just for that simple step fracture. I want to get the rest of the blade, see if I can get the rest of the blade done first. I wiped out some of that crystal pocket with that flake. So now you can't see much of it. But now I might be able to run a flake into that area. Okay. Copper is gripping this material a little bit better than steel. This material is a little bit slippery, and I think it is raw. Raw stone. And yet we call it raw because it can be heat treated. You might think it's funny that we call it raw. But it can be raw. I mean, we, can, we call it raw because it can be heat treated. So to tell the difference, we say raw or heated. Heat treat just means that it's been raised to a, a high temperature like 400 degrees. Fahrenheit so that it naps easier once it cools down of course we don't nap it hot but once it cools down it can be napped easier I don't know if I like this arrangement I tried to get that step fracture. It didn't go quite far enough. That's it. I'm not going to try for it. I'm not going to try it again.
because I've got to repair that now. Take more of the back off. Yeah. To repair that. Yeah, the, the more regular I can make this, the more realistic it looks. So that's going to be my goal. I'm, I'm sure there's a proper angle to the blade tip, but I'm just going to go by memory. This is not the blade tip I'm talking about. I'm talking about this angle right there. It's probably a, an exact number for it. some oil somewhere on that machine starting to squeak a little bit If I get good at these, I'll use better material. Just a random thought. I think this would look good in Georgetown because it's kind of steel-like. The Georgetown color is kind of steel-looking. And if I can get some parallel flaking going, I can kind of put that bevel on each side, start out with a thicker preform, and try to do beveling instead of this random pressure flaking. Try to do beveling, uh, a more regular pressure flake on the bevel to try to imitate the grind on the, on the steel blades. I don't know where the backs of these always I think the backs of these are always dull or flat no edge on the backs as far as I know so I am going to grind it down six more minutes to just do the pressure flaking on this To me, so far, the back is the hardest part because it has to be regular, thick, and flat. Straight. Regular, thick, straight. And I suppose if you're good enough, you can put a flat edge with the tool, flint napping tool, along the along the back. You can probably 
get it much flatter and squared off with another technique. The beauty of it is there's such a variation on the backs of these that I don't have to worry too much. As long as it's consistent and nice and even, it can be convex, straight, or concave, according to the pictures I saw. Lots of variation in the back, just not much leeway in far, as far as being extremely regular. has to be very regular. Yeah, my eyes are getting a little bit tired. Not too bad. But I'm having a hard time I'm having a little time a little bit of a hard time seeing the edge. That's all right. The pad is the same color, but it's not too bad. Not too bad. And I think it's early enough that I can upload both both parts, part one and two, tonight. Yeah, we're doing good as far as time-wise. I usually keep these to 30 minutes because my camera shuts off and then starts back up again. The camera's on my phone and it only takes a certain amount of memory for each video. I mean, it can only handle a certain amount of memory for each video. And I don't want to, I don't want to record in low definition. I always record at uh, high quality, just in case. I shouldn't say just in case, just because it's, all, it's the way I've always done it. So you can watch it on the big screen without too much interference or too much blurriness or whatever. Good enough for the time I have Good enough. All right. I just want to make a, a tang on this quickly here. Not too much of a tang, but a little bit. And the knives I saw were full tang, but this is not going to be full tang. I could make it full tang with a longer piece of stone, but that's just way too much risk. Way too much risk. Some thinning strikes. Just a couple. Keep drifting. I can't get the camera any closer without bumping into it. So the rest of the edge, although a little bit wavy, looks all right. All right, one more pass. I think we have enough time. Okay. 
Yeah, it'd probably look better with a bevel. So the next one I'm going to try beveling it with long bevel flakes. All right. One pass on each side. I think I have enough time. Well, barely. Barely, barely. Let's see. So I can do this. So just a sharpening pass and maybe a little bit of even out. Making it even, straight, and regular. Although maybe some of these are serrated, the fancy ones. Might have some serration to them. I don't know. I saw all kinds of different styles. So these, there's some artistic leeway, which is good. I think I might like these. Although I probably can't make too many of these in one day because it does give you some nappers cramp with the pressure flaking. But that is about it. All right. There it is. Tanto blade, tanto blade. Okay. Hopefully that wasn't too bad. All right.